This presentation focuses on, um, on describing some uh, corpora, parallel corpora of signed languages and spoken languages. Before I will start describing this corpora, I will first give some uh, brief introduction about the challenges related to sign language data. For those of you who do not work with sign languages or are not aware of all the challenges that are related to uh, their data. And then afterwards, I will talk about these two new corpora that uh, I, together with other colleagues of the Sign On project, uh, created. So the sign language of the Netherlands Dutch Halter Review Corpus, for which I also have great news. And then the gold standard parallel corpus of signed and spoken language, uh, which is an ongoing process, progress, pro project. So. First of all, for those of you who don't know, um, there are many challenges related to sign language data. And one of the main challenges is that the data available are very scarce and sparse. And with scarce, if we want to kind of measure the scarcity, I can tell you that the most represented sign language, uh, sign language in Europe, which is uh, German sign language, has 10 times less data available than a spoken language that is considered lower resource. That's why I put on the slide lower than lower resource. And in addition to that, there's also a lot of variability in terms of quality of the data and format. With quality, I mean that uh, many data sets that are available uh, have the sign language as the target of a translation and actually not only a translation, but the target of simultaneous interpretation, which means that when the, um, the sign language is produced by often the hearing interpreters, there is a lot of time constraints and pressure. And so uh, the, um, the, the, the interpreted sign language might not be exactly faithful to what is being said in spoken language. In addition to that, there is no standardized way of um, formatting the data, nor uh, standardized conventions for any type of annotation for the data. And an additional problem is that often these uh, data sets are, are not geared towards machine translation or towards natural language processing because they've been thought and created for different purposes, for example, for qualitative linguistic research. And an example can be that maybe the data set um, is not downloadable in one chunk, but in separate files. And also the format might, might be not immediately uh, machine learning suitable. For example, many of the corpora uh, of sign language that were created for linguistic purposes are using ELAN and actually within sign on we also developed a framework to extract information from ELAN uh, from for files created in ELAN uh, to then create a, um, a format that is machine learning suitable. But so given all these challenges we decided to try to address at least part of them by creating new corpora of, of parallel data between sign languages and spoken languages. And the first one is the sign language of the Netherlands Dutch Holiday Review Corpus. For this, for this corpus, we focused on the hotel domain and it basically contains hotel reviews from booking.com. And we decided to focus on a specific domain because we wanted to expect similarly, similar vocabulary in various contexts. And so then we could have similar, the same sign, for example, performed by different signers or by the same signer in different contexts in order also to account to a certain extent for inter and inter-speaker signer variation. And um, the corpus contains uh, written English, which is the source language, then written Dutch, and then sign language of the Netherlands, NGT uh, videos, of course. And the total of reviews is 297. And in terms of sentences, it's roughly almost 1700 sentences. And in terms of NGT videos, it's almost four hours of recording. 
the, the source um, English text were from a data set containing reviews from booking.com that is available on Kaggle. And we translated this, these reviews automatically with, uh, into, into written Dutch and also had then the, the text uh, post-edited by a professional company. For the sign language side, so for the NGT side, uh, we had the Dutch text translated into NGT videos by six deaf professional translators. We decided to only have deaf professional translators because we wanted to um, have authentic signing since these people use uh, NGT as their main uh, way of communication and also to try to limit as much as possible the influence of the source language even though we are aware that the source language will still be Dutch in this translation. And also, in addition to that, in order to um, try to ensure good quality of the data, um, the translators were translating in offline modus, so they didn't have any immediate time constraint, so they could uh, prepare their, their translations beforehand and then perform them. Here we have an example. So we have videos aligned with, um, with a file that contains the, the written English, the written Dutch automatically translated, so the second column, and then the post-edited one, the identifier of the, of the review, and the identifier of the translator. We have the identifier of the translator for, for um, training purposes. And in this example, the, um, the um, automatically translated version and the post-edited version are quite similar, but in some cases the differences were higher, even though never very dramatical, I would say. Um, I'm not sure if I can, maybe I can show you the video. I don't know what's going to happen then. But I try. So here we have a, a review in uh, NGT, so that's sign language of the Netherlands. And we see that the background is natural, like daily life. We only made sure that the translators wouldn't have anyone behind them moving in order to be sure that the um, environment would be natural, but still not too difficult for, for example, for future uh, sign recognition purposes. Now I'm going to try to go back works and this part of the day of the corpus is available publicly available under the CC by NC license uh, on the ELG and on Clarin you can access it via the the, Q, the the QR code and the link here and now I move to the news about this corpus the news is that since very recently, like a few days ago, we also have an extra language in this parallel corpus, which is Flemish Sign Language. And this was possible, made possible by the collaboration of other colleagues from the Sign On project. And they also had uh, six deaf translators performing the translations and, um, and five out of six translators in their case come from a, a program at KU Leuven for translation and interpreting of sign languages. Um, I forgot to mention that um, the part of the corpus with um, sign language of the Netherlands translations uh, was funded by the European Language Equality II project. But so now we have, you, here again, if I click, you can see it. Oh, no, okay. But pretend that on the, on the left side, there's um, a video from Flemish Sign Language translating, performing the same review. So then now we have two sign languages and two uh, written languages in a parallel corpus. And also this second part with the Flemish Sign Language should be on Clarin soon and on LG platform soon as well. 
and we still have some ideas and work in progress for this corpus and we are thinking of including also Spanish and Irish parallel text. The reason for these two specific languages is that um, is that um, they are two languages included in the sign-on project and we are still discussing about adding maybe audio even though reading would be different than, uh, than just speaking. Moving to the second uh, project, it's still ongoing, um, it will end in January and for this project we focus on semi-spontaneous Flemish sign language. Uh, with semi-spontaneous we mean that uh, all these videos are already existing and were produced by authentic signers for a signing audience. So they are as close as possible to real life signing. Uh, for this uh, corpus, since our focus was the quality rather than a domain, uh, we gathered data from different uh, domains and basically focused on having uh, authentic uh, signing. And we also uh, found some material that has voiceover and subtitles and we are planning to include that as well in our corpus. The project had three phases. In the first phase, we had to gather the data and get the informed consent form signed by the authors of the data. And then we had the translation phase, which is still ongoing at the moment and is actually requiring longer than we expected and then the translators themselves expected. And for the translation task here, we have a mixed uh, we decided to have mixed pairs of deaf and hearing translators working together in order to preserve the, the message of the sign uh, language video, but also have good quality of the Dutch text. The final phase then will focus. Uh, this is still about the second phase, but yes, the alignment between, will be between sentence and message. Um, while instead for the NGT Oreco, the previous corpus, the alignment at the moment, unfortunately, is only per review. But we would like to have a, dish, like a, a more fine-grained alignment. And uh, the last phase will be the quality control. So uh, uh, members of the deaf community and of the Flamsech Baretal Centrum will focus on uh, verifying the quality of the translations that were produced. And the corpus is not available yet because it's still ongoing and actually it shouldn't be NGT or ECO, it should be the other acronym. But besides that, it will be available on Clarin and on the ALG, ELG uh, under the CC BY license because since the data is already publicly available, it was easier to get uh, complete, uh, an op a complete open uh, license for this data. So in conclusion, we just made a small step towards uh, reducing the scarcity of sign language data. Our data sets, our corpora are still small, uh, but they are a starting point and they can be potentially uh, expanded with other languages or more translations, more, more videos, more text. And it's still, there's still a lot to do, but uh, we are working on that and uh, data sparsity will still be there for a while but at least we we are we are addressing it with these uh, such uh, projects yes hello thank you for this presentation and i have a question could you elaborate on the uh, the settings of the recordings because you mentioned that uh, you wanted a natural background which is not ideal when you want to uh, perform automatic, uh, I mean, sign recognition, but uh, is usual when you're doing work on, you know, a qualitative basis. So um, I was wondering um, how are you going to manage that with lighting? I mean, the last uh, uh, signer, there was some light coming in from the um, left-hand side, I think, and that might set the um, uh, rec automatic recognition off. I mean, I don't know anything about automatic recognition of signs, but I, I suppose those parameters can affect uh, performance. Um, thanks for your question. Indeed, in order to make the decisions about the sort of videos that we wanted to get from the translators, we also discussed with our colleagues from the group within SignOn on automatic sign recognition. 
And um, the reason why we decided to have like a natural background and not blue or green screen is that uh, we still wanted to recreate sort of natural environment because the still indeed for the recognition it would be easier to have just uh, a blue, blue or green screen but then in the, for example for an app or something that you're using in real life there you're not gonna get that and also since our project sign on focuses on uh, um, an app for the daily use then our focus was to get data that recreates more the daily use than perfect settings Thanks for a very inspiring talk. Um, do you also plan to extend your project with collecting data uh, in more dialogue situations where you have two signers uh, that can also overlap? Um, or is this out of scope because it's too difficult still? Um, I can say that in the second corpus, the Godspark sign, there are some dialogues. Also because they are also part of a TV show, so there are di uh, indeed dialogues. Instead, in the first corpus, no. Uh, it would be great to add dialogues, but yes, at the moment it's out of the scope, like for the NG Teorico, we, we could perform this task and build this corpus thanks to the funding of the ELE project. And then, I forgot to mention, but for the Ghost Park sign, we, got, we were partially funded by the European Association for Machine Translation sponsorship of activities. So um, these tasks are always very expensive and time consuming. So ideally, yes, but at the moment, I, we don't have anything uh, ready or extra fundings available.